so we've been around for about three years now. Um, three years, eh? Two and a half. Almost three. Almost three years. And we, we came together um, interrogating um, our own personal histories and our connected histories um, within the space of Cape Town. It's about gentrification, but it's about a larger process of gentrification. So what is allowed, what are the conditions, um, uh, how were they created that allowed this current gentrification? Um, and so we're looking at historical gentrification. We're looking at the colonial encounter as the first point of gentrification. So, and what does gentrification do? It, it erases, it replaces um, certain histories and makes other histories more important. And so as a result, in our current position, there are things that are swept under the carpet, there are histories that are hidden. And that's part of what we are doing is, is bringing those to the fore um, in a dignified way. The images that we try and portray, especially of people of color in South Africa, are trying to counteract the images that have been used historically. I think um, that we go through a lot of images, we, we, we look at a lot of images and there's always certain, certain images that trigger something within us. It's either some kind of familiarity with the image, some kind of nostalgia with a, with a portrait. Um, when you feel that sense of familiarity with something, 10 to 1 there usually is some kind of actual connection to, to a place, a person, a family or whatever. Um, so for me, that's I, I think it's also for for you guys as well. That there's, there's usually some kind of nostalgia or familiarity within the photographs because they could be your auntie, a distant aunt. Uh, they could be a distant um, grandfather or something like that. Yeah, I think it's a lot to do with um, a philosophy first. We, we try and start the process of thinking, which is um, actually that if things are linked. People are linked to, to histories and we are all linked. Um, Cape Town is a very universal kind of a city, I think, in a lot of ways. And Cape Town has a deep history and a very um, specific history. I think the process of digging deep into imagery is kind of a way to counter or to somehow talk about that and, or to somehow make sense of it. And I think it's not, we don't have, we don't look for straight answers, but we kind of just feel around and find images that suddenly make sense. So it's a process. Hopefully people think about the process more than just the finished uh, image mm. than anything. I think also um, a key word that we <coughs> use often is trigger. So we, we, you know, we're not trying to dictate or, yeah. or impose a new history or a new way. Like this is how you must see our history. It's about just triggering thought processes like Grant saying in people's minds to think differently like you know, where, where do I come from, what is my history, what is my identity. The, the archive material we use from the District 6 Museum, often we don't know the actual story or even the names of the people in the photographs, um, which is already a problem because these people are a name and so it's about giving them a space, um, putting them on a wall, triggering people's memories. People might even realize that's my family member or they used to live in District 6 or whatever. Um, so it's about bringing that back into public imagination and not tucked away or hidden in an archive somewhere or <coughs> under someone's bed. It's about putting it back into a, a mainstream space. Also, like it's not there's, there's there's certain ideas of where history exists, and that's you know in a very traditional museum. And the problem with our traditional museums in South Africa is that they display people, especially people of color, in a certain way ethnographically in terms of national history. So there's a disconnect of, of people and, and place. So putting images or so portraits of people in, say for example, Woodstock, um, it's also creating a connection between that, that history is, is everywhere. It's not just in a museum, that these are historical spaces and they are relevant. I think there's also, when we put up work, especially on the street, there's an immediacy in the, in the moment that we put up work. So people engage with, with us while we're putting up the work. And um, that, you know, they come and they ask, what is this? Uh, oh yeah, I know this photographer, this is Van Kalka, or this looks like so-and-so, or 
Um, so that's the kind of feedback we get. It's, it's very immediate. But also the work that we put up, especially outside, is not meant to last forever. It's not supposed to be a fixed um, visual narrative that's it's supposed to degrade and become something else. Also I've seen on Instagram like people taking photos in front of it. Mm. I've seen that. So I've, you, you see it like taking another life in another mm. in another domain, you know what I mean? So and I mean that's 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 nice to see that people are some are taking ownership of the image or you know engaging with the image on that level. I think also people people make up their own stories. Mm. Um, I've, I've had a friend who travels on the bus route <laughs> down Woodstock Main Road and she she didn't know about the burning museum and then she told me I saw these pastes up up along the, the, the street and I see it every morning and she kind of told me this looked like, like my auntie, this looked like my uncle and so it kind of people, it takes on a, a new life within people's lives, within their daily routines um, or not, sometimes people just ignore it like a, like a Coca-Cola ad or something, I don't know. Um, but I, in a way we are, in a way we are competing with that kind of advertising space, in, uh, you know, like trying mm. to get people to think or in a way buy the story or, or create some story of their own.